Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Now, I know it's almost been about two weeks since the last video, and I have been slacking recently on my uploads. Now, if you want to know why, basically, I've been doing my own little side projects where I recreate album artworks from artists that have released artworks that are kind of recreatable in a sense that it's not just like a 2D drawing, it's like 3D, I can incorporate myself into it, like photographic, etc. So I've been doing that, so it's been taking up a lot of my time as well as work and doing YouTube, so it's kind of been prioritised doing that. So today, I thought, why don't I show you guys how I made a certain cover? And the recent one I've done is the ASAP Rocky testing. I thought it'd be nice for you to see how I created that because there's quite a lot of skill that's gone into that and a lot of process. So yeah, that's what we're gonna be creating today. ASAP Rocky testing. Let's get on with the video. Ch -ch -ching, boy, boy. Now I'm gonna give you a walkthrough of how to do it, not a full on tutorial, because a lot of this is stuff that you should kind of know how to do. And if you don't, it shouldn't be too hard to pick up. So what we're gonna be doing firstly is I'm going to split the tutorial into three sections and the first one is the title. So the title here is, you know, slanted, we've got nice text with the lines going through it and then we've got an italic uh, type title um, and then a nice, nice stroke around the um, text. So use the ASAP Rocky testing as a back plate, lock it so you don't accidentally move it and then what you want to do is create a, rec a rounded rectangle which I've done here. And then what you want to do is go to edit and skew it so that you can create the slanted effect. And then just you, if you turn the opacity down on your layer, you can use the back plate as a guide and you just want to slant it so that it matches the title. So I've done that and then you create the same one, but you do a stroke um, and you do it around this, you do it around the yellow outline and it is slightly different from the outside so you can't just use the uh, back one because the curves are smaller for one so you want to just do it man do it like them both separately and then the text is pretty simple the title is basically the font paladoma i think it's called Pal padaloma italic so yeah you just want to you know type in what you want to type in and get it down to a size where you think appropriate and then once you've done that, the hardest part now is creating this text here, which is the testing, which has the uh, lines going through it. Now I'll show you how I did this. So basically you want to take, go into After Effects and you want to type in the words testing and in the Pal, Pal Doloma typeface, and then you want to duplicate it. And so basically what you want to do is go to create outlines and then right click and then ungroup. So then you have each set, like letter separate. And then once you do that, you wanna do what you did in Photoshop, create a backplate, and then put the text over the original. Um, basically change your text by moving the points. But if you push A on the keyboard, you can select the points. And this is probably one of the longest parts of what I did. And you basically just have to go around and trace the um, thing by moving these little points. So if you select off of it and just select like an anchor point, you can change it. So that's how I did the text. I went around and did it for everything, every single letter. The S's were the hardest part um, and the G was all right. But um, yeah, once you've done that, you want to export this as a PNG. So right click and then click for export and then as a single asset and it will come up in here and then you want to export it as a PNG, put it quite high so you've got a big skirt size. And once you've done that, you're done in Illustrator, you do not need to go back in. So we'll close down out of that, won't save anything. And then what you want to do is drag your vector object into Photoshop. Now once it's in Photoshop, you want to bring the size down so it matches the uh, back plate. And then what you want to do is apply some effects to it. So what I've applied is a color overlay I've created a dark and I've made it darken yellow and I've, I've also the color has been um, eye dropped from the original so if you don't know how to eye drop just click I on the keyboard and select the color and then what you want to do is click on pattern overlay and in your patterns you should find a pattern that looks like this just like a dot and when it does is you 
creates this uh, like lined effect. Now, if you haven't got your text at the right size, it won't look as good as this, and it should be at 100%, it should be fine. Um, I didn't really have to tweak it as much, so you can see it pretty much almost identical to the original. Um, so yeah, so now that's, that's, that's the first section over and done with. Now what we wanna move on to is the photography, what I basically did in here for the raw images. And I basically sat in front of a green screen at work, had the lighting set up quite nicely. I had the lighting for the back to be quite lit and the front, I dimmed it quite a bit because I needed some harsh shadows on there. Because on the original image, there's quite a lot of harsh shadows. So, and then I just went crazy with photos. I messed my hair up, made it just look a little bit like, you know, just a little bit cool. Um, so we'll just load an image here. So you can kind of see what I'm doing. There's a few here. Um, you know, you kind of get the gist. Try do your cool faces. Try reenact ASAP Rocky, I don't know. But yeah, so that's what I did. Once you've done that, you basically want to pull these raw images into Photoshop. So let's just create, let's just open one that I've used. So and it should open up camera raw. Now when you, yeah, see it's already got my effects that I applied to it, but basically once you add it in then, I basically tweak the con the exposure contrast just to create like some really nice shadowing on the um, on the faces, and then basically turn down the vibrance a little bit. Just just kind of go for a feel that you think matches the original, you know. And then once you've done that, you just save the image, or you can open it in the program. Um, I'm going to cancel that, and then what you want to do then is what I did, which was basically start putting in your people. Um, putting them in the right positions and once that's right you'll get you know you start putting them more in and I was happy with that amount I, I kind of cut out this bit that was here I didn't really like the blackness I couldn't tell what it was either so I didn't want to really start playing with it too much um, like creating some like weird I did create a black texture at first but it just didn't look right so I just went with the heads I've got and then now let's just turn off the back plate so you can kind of see what I've got yeah so you import it like this and once you've got it all positioned, that's when you start playing with more effects inside. So let's just say on person two, I started adding things like curves, um, a photo filter and levels just so I could create like a more distinct look and kind of match more of the original because, you know, you kind of, there's a lot of coloring and differences in the original. There's like green shadows and uh, etc. So I'll just show you how, how it's been put on. So like each effect, I put, keep putting photo filters. You just kind of want to match what you've already created really or what's been created by you know the original so as you can see i'm just slowly putting on the effects and that's when you get the original image that i showed you at the beginning so there's like a lot of dark there's like more orange on here so you put like a photo fit with it's orange maybe an overlay there's more orangey here blue here so do the same but make it blue and etc and like and then there's also parts in on the faces on the silhouettes where i basically colored it in so if we go into say i don't know this one here it's a person three i've named it and you can see i've made a mask and on that mask it's kind of i've just kind of like gone round and got rid of the areas that were too much so just create like more light instead of like features oh yeah another thing i also did was i took a couple of the hair from the original photo and placed it on myself so like you see here, it's like the hair from the original photo and then I blended it with my own and the same with here, just because I quite like the hand here. I just quite like the dreads that were in the original. So that's what I did with that. Um, but yeah, it's all it's all like, you know, it's all up to yourself what you want to do with the with the color grading, etc. Because it can take a lot of time. It took That's probably the longest bit it took me was making this look right. The photographs had to look right. Now we'll get on to the third part of this tutorial. Now the last effects basically I added were what I would do was once I had all these layers finished how I wanted them I'd select them all and then you want to push command J on the keyboard and this will create a duplicate. Once you've got a duplicate you right click and click merge layers and then you'll end up with one of these which is uh, basically the image. And then once you've got the image which was I, I merged all these photographs I then added, um, so if you go into filter, go into noise, and then add noise, you can kind of add how much noise you think will, because they've used analog cameras and it's kind of like, it's got that really film look, 
you kind of want to replicate that yourself if you've not if you can do it with a film camera then spot on but if you're using a dslr like i was you want to kind of re replicate that by using noise and also when you're in camera raw you can kind of add it in then as well and then once you've done that that's practically everything that goes on top on goes on to it really it takes a lot of time and practice and it's a lot of you know tweaking because i was going around and making sure these looked perfect for a long time and then the text took quite a long time so yeah but once you've got it it's quite a nice like even if you didn't want to do any of the photographs and you just wanted how to do this text as like i don't know like a meme or something you know how to do it now you can create it yourself but yeah guys i hope you enjoyed it i haven't done any videos in a while so i felt like i had to put something out because i don't want to feel like i've gone off the face of the planet because i haven't i'm just you know busy creating these and you know and summer as well it's hard to keep up anyway guys i hope you enjoyed the video be sure to share with your friends hit that like button and if you want to see more obviously subscribe because i make f cool videos so i'll see you in the next one judging what what